How you going guys? Hope you're all doing well. I just I got a bit a request the other day on the Hunting Life Forum um, to show people the with the warmer weather coming pretty shortly, it's just around the corner. And he uh, I got a request to show people how I keep my ferrets cool. Um, some people use ice bottles and other methods to try and keep their ferrets uh, cool during the summer. Um, the region that I'm in is a little bit warmer than uh, Melbourne. I'm on the New South Wales Victorian border and and we do get uh, long periods of hot weather. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just show you what I do. I've got a hose that, that clicks on here. This hose runs up runs up along the along the cage there. Runs all the way. There's one on each cage that we've got a sprinkler system which sprays a mist into the cage and I've got one one on each cage on every single cage on all, every one of my cages including the, the big one there that's got a couple of jets that, that spray mist into the cage what the mist does is um, it, it kills the surrounding temperature by at least 10 degrees Celsius and even even when it's too hot you will all often see the ferrets they'll come and they'll lie where the mist drops down and that's what that's what I use on all of mine. So you know, with the heat just around the corner, guys, I would uh, highly recommend these systems. I use a Nilex system now. Uh, there's a couple of different versions that you can pick up from Bunnings. Um, I recommend the Nilex system. It's a little bit more flexible and and a little bit a little bit more long lasting. So uh, as you can see, I've separated all the all the uh, females, the pregnant females now. I've got one in here that's just about to drop. She's getting, uh, or maybe, I don't know, but within the next week she'll have hers and these, all these does here are pregnant as well. And this is the, uh, the dad. And Spike. So, yeah, that's what I do. Also, um, I got a, a question on YouTube about what do I feed my ferrets? As you can see, I've got chickens, so they obviously get eggs. I recommend that you boil the eggs before you give them to them. It's okay to give them raw eggs um, every now and again, but no more than twice, or twice to three times a week at the most. I wouldn't give them raw eggs three times a week. I'd boil all mine, and I might give them a raw egg maybe once a week. And if I do, I'll normally mix it with a, a dry ferret food, a dry food, but um, a formulated ferret dry food, and I'll mix maybe a raw egg with that. So, um, so they're not just getting the raw egg because it does give them diarrhea. But uh, when you mix it with the dry food, it's not so bad. So, but yeah, I give them a combination of stuff, guys. They get eggs twice at the most, three times a week, mixed in with their food, usually cooked, like I said. So they get the ferret dry food. They get egg. I give them mince, liver. Too much liver is no good for them. All these sort of things are, are given in moderation. And I switch them up. I don't give them liver every day. I don't give them mince every day. I don't give them dry food every day. I mix it up. But they're the things that I give my ferrets. I give them, and, and obviously rabbit, um, whole raw, whole rabbits minus the guts. I, I take the heads off as well. Although you can leave the heads on, they'll eat the eyes and stuff like that. But uh, normally I'll take the heads off, take the guts out, and um, and that's what I do. And just throw them in like that, so they get a lot of rabbit. Um, if you ask, when they're pregnant, I like to mix it up a bit, a lot more. But you know, during most of the season, or most of the time when, when I'm not breeding, they get a lot more rabbit, just normal rabbit. When they're, they're pregnant uh, does, I mix their food up a bit, give, they get a, a more balanced um, diet. But there's nothing wrong with giving them rabbit all the time. You can just feed them rabbit for all their life and they'll live fine on that, no problem. Um, because when they're out in the wild, that's what they eat, you know, like they're... they're they're a meat eater and that's what they need, they need meat. People will ask me about cat food, I said look cat food will give, will keep you, your ferrets alive um, but really it doesn't have the, the protein percentage required according to, uh, to the experts. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about today that I get asked questions about is about, about um, whether whether to use um, female ferrets or male ferrets. My personal preference is female, um, but I approach everything with an open mind. I've been talking with a mate of mine recently, and um, he is, he's been sort of 
telling me to use cup bucks. I said, I've never used cup bucks. I have used bucks. I said, but I find them, I mean, if you look at a buck, the, physio the physiology of, of, a, of a buck compared to a, a female, they're bigger, they're stronger, and they're usually faster. So if you've got something that's bigger and stronger and faster, it just stands to reason when you stick them in a rabbit burrow that when they catch something, A, they're stronger so they can hang on to it better. The rabbit can't pull away as easy. They'll catch more because they're faster and they'll hold them and kill them underground um, because they're stronger and, and faster. That's how I've always approached it. I have used bucks in the past and plenty of them. You see on my videos, I'm, you know, I'm always using bucks. Um, so, you know, like that's why I use females. But we were having a bit of a chat about it. So this year, about using cut bucks, and he was telling me what he thought the advantages were, etc. Like I said, I approach everything with, a, with an open mind. I haven't tried cut bucks. So this year I'm going to keep two, two of the, uh, out of Grace's litter, Grace and, Grace and this one. I'll show you Grace, I'll just get her out. She's pregnant at the moment. This is Grace. As you can see, she's a um, beautiful type female ferret. And she's a great worker, so I'm going to keep two bucks out of her if I, if I get them. She's got about a, oh, maybe two weeks to go. And this is the one I got off Phil. She's got about two and a half weeks to go. So I'm going to keep two bucks and get them when they're 10 months old. I'll, um, I'll get them castrated and we'll see how they go. Look at my personal, what I think, what I think most people, why they use cut bucks, what I've always thought is when a female comes on heat you've got all the hassle about you've got to breed them etc etc I get around that by using a, a vasectomised buck which is this bloke here he's, he's vasectomised which just means he can't get them pregnant but he takes them out of heat so that's what I do anyway here's your other one Phil she's a beauty as well you've seen her working the other day Sally Sally's just coming off heat Sissy. I can breed both of those now if I wanted, but I'm not breeding the, that line anymore. I'm just breeding Grace's line. All right, guys, well, that's a little bit of information. If there's anything that you want to know or you think I can help you with, just write it down in the comments on the YouTube page. And uh, like I said, look, everything that I say is just my personal opinion. There's other ways to do things. Um, you know, what I, doesn't, what I do isn't necessarily... 100% correct. I mean, I'm still learning. I've been in this game for 40 years and I'm still learning. And I, but I, like I said, I approach everything with an open mind and, um, and I listen to other people because you never know what you can learn. Never think that you know it all. But like I said, I personally like females. Other people like um, males or cut bucks. But each to their own. But I'll try a couple of buck, cut bucks this year and we'll see how we go. Alright guys, enjoy whatever you're doing in life, goes past way too fast, take care, bye bye for now.